So in this video, we've finally done it. Uh, we made it all the way through all the hairy quantum mechanics, uh, and we're finally ready to calculate the concentration of electrons and holes in a semiconductor. So the equation uh, for calculating the a number of electrons, uh, we're going to try and figure out what exactly that is just intuitively uh, using the tools we have available to us. So we're going to start off with the, our band diagram, and then we're going to slowly add stuff to it. So remember that we've said before that electrons in the conduction band are the ones that we're interested in, so floating around here, uh, and holes in the valence band are what we're interested in. So maybe we've got, say, three. Uh, in reality, we're going to have uh, more, more like 10 to the 11, but that's, that's okay. If we want to actually calculate the number of electrons, a number of holes, we have to use quantum mechanics. We don't have a choice. That's why we went through uh, now quite a few topics regarding quantum mechanics. And so in order to calculate the number of electrons, we're going to use quantum states. So remember, we derived the uh, density of states function, g of e, uh, and we said that, well, the density of states, the number of states per unit energy, uh, also technically per unit volume, but don't worry about that right now. Everything we've been dealing with is a density. Uh, so the number, the density of states goes like this square root function, square root of E. Uh, and it's got a bunch of constants out front. So square root of E times, I don't know, effective mass to the three halves, something or other, uh, plus a bunch of other stuff. Um, so this is the density of states function, or the number of states, so say within a certain slice, uh, DE, the number of states N is just equal to G of E times DE. And we also said that the probability that those states will be occupied, so the probability F of E, uh, that those states will be occupied as a function of energy, looks kind of like this. Uh, is extremely likely at low energies that the states will be occupied. And then at higher and higher energies, it gets lower and lower. And once we hit the Fermi energy, uh, EF, uh, we are at a probability of one half that the state will be occupied. And then after we fall past the Fermi energy, uh, we go, it, it falls off very quickly. And the equation we said for that was 1 over 1 plus e to the e minus ef over kt. And so in order to calculate everything, we need the, we need the Fermi energy ef. And we said that, well, we're going to, it's not exactly halfway between the conduction band and the valence band, but it's pretty close. And that's what we're going to use for, for our purposes. But here, it won't, uh, it won't actually matter that much. So Altogether, uh, we say that the number of electrons is just equal to the integral uh, from, in the case of electrons, it's from the conduction band edge, because that's what we're, those are the electrons that we're interested, interested in, to the maximum energy of the conduction band, uh, the density of states function, g of e, times the probability that those states will be occupied f of e de. Uh, now, one last thing, this ec max, I never told you what it was. Uh, and it turns out that since this function f of e falls off so quickly with energy, that we can just take ec max to be infinity. And that's going to make uh, integrating this whole thing quite a bit easier. So we can just say that the number of electrons is equal to uh, the integral from the conduction band energy to infinity of the density of states times the probability those states will be occupied integrated over energy. And so that is our final equation. Now, I've got some bad news. Uh, this equation cannot be evaluated. So it's known as the Fermi-Dirac integral, and it's tabulated. It's, we've got tables of the Fermi-Dirac integral integrated numerically, but you cannot calculate, uh, you cannot have a closed form expression for the number of electrons if you are to do things this way. But remember that we said, well, uh, if our Fermi function, if the probability is sufficiently far away from the Fermi energy, 
then this just looks like an, a simple exponential distribution. So e to the minus uh, e minus ef over kt. Uh, and that's because this number e to the e minus ef over kt was much, much greater than one. So for energies exceeding the Fermi energy by like three or four kT, we can have maybe a 1% error in evaluating this integral. And that's more than acceptable uh, for, the, for the price of getting a closed form expression. So if we write out the full integral uh, with all of the, the nasty symbols in it, instead of just these functions, these symbolic functions, we'll get that the electron concentration is equal to four pi times the effective mass of the electron to the three halves divided by h cubed times the square root of e minus ec uh, times e to the e minus ef over kt, and I'm running out of space, de. So this is the integral that we need to evaluate in order to find the concentration of electrons. Now you'll notice that I changed the density of states function to have an e minus ec, uh, and that's because uh, because of our semi because our system is a semiconductor with a conduction band and a valence band. Uh, and not just a, a an infinite potential well like we assumed in deriving this equation. There are no states uh, within this band gap. So between EC and EV in this region, there are no states. Um, so the density of states in this region is zero. And then the density of states follows this square root dependence once you get into the conduction band. So that's just a slight modification of our original formula to account for the, uh, the nature of the semiconductor. The fact that it actually has two energy bands and there's no states in between. So if we carry out this integral, we'll get that n is equal to two times, well, that should be a two, 2 times uh, 2 pi times the effective mass of the electron, mn, or me. It's uh, more commonly written as mn, uh, times kt divided by h squared times e to the minus ec minus ef over kt. It's a pretty ugly expression, especially because it's got a Oh, and this, this is all to the three halves, if, if we couldn't make it any worse. So it's a pretty ugly expression, because the electron concentration depends on temperature to the three halves, and then e to the minus one over temperature, and it's got the effective mass in here, it's got some universal constants, h, pi, it's got some twos, uh, it's got an exponential, depends on the conduction band energy. So it's a pretty complicated and nasty expression. And we, we usually simplify it by just saying that n is equal to, well, this constant times nc uh, times e to the minus ec minus ef over kt. And we use this nc here just to say, well, I don't want to write all of these constants, so I'd much prefer uh, just a simple equation that lumps them all together. And so nc is just equal to 2 times 2 pi times the effective mass of the electron uh, times kt divided by h squared to the 3 halves. And so that's just don't, so we don't have to write that over and over again. And so nc, uh, we, we give it a name. It's the effective density of states. Uh, so basically it's saying if we didn't perform this integral, and we just wanted to evaluate the density of states using a single equation and then this exponential dependence on the Fermi energy and temperature, then we, do just, we just do it with this parameter called the effective density of states. And I didn't really use, much, use this concept much in my uh, semiconductor course and in one, X178 UCI, and I don't think it adds a lot of value um, to the discussion, but that's just my personal opinion. We will be using different equations in the, in the majority of this course. But this is finally 
uh, finally the answer. So as long as we know the temperature, we know the Fermi energy EF, uh, we know the electron's effective mass, and we know universal constants because we always know universal constants. Uh, we know the conduction band energy, or more specifically, the conduction band in relation to the Fermi energy, then we know how many electrons are in the system. So we've made it. Uh, we've finally answered the first question of semiconductor physics, and that is, how many charge carriers are there in the system? That is the first and most important question of uh, classical semiconductor physics. And you might say, well, uh, we only calculate the electron concentration. And you're right. In the next video, we're going to calculate the whole concentration. And we're going to calculate it uh, with a, a, couple, a couple differences that we need to take into account. But it's extremely similar, basically identical to, the, to, the, to this calculation for the electron concentration. So we have answered the first question of semiconductor physics, and this will let us move on uh, to more interesting problems involving how, how do these carriers move around, how do we manipulate them, how do we change them, uh, and how do we use electric fields to uh, manipulate devices made using uh, semiconductors. So that's, that's what we have to look forward to in the rest of the course.